I'm gonna paint a picture. Thomas is five years old. His Pee Wee football team is all in 10, but they all want a trophy. He completes all of his assignments in class, but they aren't correct, and he is showered with gifts from his parents. Let's fast forward. Thomas is 16 now. He doesn't want to practice, claiming he's been on trophy winning teams. So he's benched. He's completely befuddled in class, and he fails numerous exams, but he still passes on to the next grade level. And he loses his iPad and Xbox 720 are constitutional rights. Let's fast forward one more time. Thomas is 49. His softball beer league teammates hate him. He's failed college twice. <laughs> and he lives with his parents, who are overzealous to keep their 49-year-old baby around. But do you know who Thomas blames for his disappointing life? The mailman, Ellen, Ricardo, Peter Griffin, his college professor, Oprah, Mike living three doors down, Earl Childress, the elderly Edmund, all 42 <laughs> And we can't forget mommy and daddy. <laughs> now tell me, do you know a Thomas in your life? Because I know several. The truth is, Thomas can only blame two things, himself and a false sense of perfection. <laughs> if you're stuck in the quicksand, I'm going to help you out. My issue in society is a false sense of perfection. Too many of us are growing up being told we're special or exceptional. Everyone is uniquely perfect. This turns you into our friend Thomas. You're entitled but have a distorted sense of self. And by that I mean that Thomas was given a trophy and he was called a champion. He was showered with gifts, only to be knocked off his pedestal more and more the older he got. Why? Because he, the older he got, the closer he got to reality and in the real world. And in the real world, we're not going to get promoted for alphabetizing the male. Thomas could never discover what he excelled at because others deemed him excellent at everything. This issue is Godzilla terrorizing our haven. It's a cancer taking over our thoughts, and it's a deadly parasite that will affix itself onto anything. Imagine if Thomas had kids. Wouldn't they be subjected to the same treatment that Thomas received, and then wouldn't they end up the exact same way? I'm gonna send out the jets, I'm gonna create a cure, and we're gonna get rid of that tick, because I have a solution. I feel like, well, will all the parents in the room stand up? Your job isn't easy. Your job isn't easy because we live in one of the most affluent societies in history. There isn't a formula to raising great kids. It's not as if we can calculate compassion to the second power divided by discipline equals well-balanced kids. No. But what you can do is set the boundaries for how much love is too much love. Secondly, when we're called something enough times, eventually we're going to believe it. Everything is good as is, and as a result, your drive for improvement is going to be halted because you were told you're perfectly fine. Ooh. Now, I can relate this to my own life. I can relate this to my own life because it's easier to accept the loss and move on than to tear down others and direct a crooked finger in their directions. I've met and seen people every day. They will blame, they will blame, they will blame their dogs for not getting homework assignments done. We're gonna blame our parents for not getting to school on time or a teacher for failing a class. But we have to let our actions define us, not our excuses or promises because it'll prevent us from learning. And I always say, not making the same mistake twice will always weigh more than never learning the answer at all. I'm not just speaking blindly from my opinion. I have facts, cue cards to be exact. <laughs> Let's start off with avid listener, Barry Franks of the Jewish Community Center. He says, not everybody can win. The world's not created equally. Then we're gonna go downtown. Andrew Burns says, giving a trophy to everybody takes away from the motivation to dig deeper. And then from the actual article where these people came from, it states, they learn a valuable lesson about failure. 
they realize that life does go on and that they can get another chance. Hard work will always be the key to opening the doors of success. We can't let entitlements or egregious compliments give our lives substance. We have to do that through actions and accomplishments. <clears throat> Society cannot raise us all like we're perfect, because if we all are, no one is, and the word will lose all meaning. Studying, practicing, or staying up late to write a paper are all onerous tasks. And yes, having a perfect memory would make it easier, or having a perfect physical ability would make them simpler, but that doesn't phase me. I, all of us, are stronger for our scars. We have a story of overcoming adversity that we love to tell. Jawan, Diamante, Brandon Miller. <laughs> Look at perfection this way. If a rainbow was perfectly green, would its appeal better a multicolored one? Of course not. A rainbow is beautiful for its differences and wide array of colors. No one is perfect and no one should aspire to be. The only thing that should separate human beings when it comes to sports, education, jobs, society, or success <laughs> is ambition.